All right, guys, let's build the best cybersecurity resume together. So I have my laptop with me and we're basically going to be building this resume from scratch. So obviously all of you guys know how important it is to have a good resume, but what's even more important is to have a resume that is optimized to be able to be found easier by recruiters with the key skills and action words that recruiters are looking for when they're going through hundreds or even thousands of applications for a job. Basically your goal is to stand out the most against all the other candidates with other resumes. And another important thing is the fact that your resume is going to look different depending on your years of experience, depending on whether or not you're looking for an internship, a full-time job, your resumes are going to look different, not just down to your experience and job descriptions, but also just the layout of your resume. So this right here is my current resume. I honestly have used this format for six or seven years or so. Um, I've used this since the sophomore year of college. And looking back now, it's been seven years since my resume has really gotten a facelift besides just, you know, adding on my new work experiences. So today I'll basically be remaking my own resume using Beam Jobs, which is one of the top resume builders and using their resume builder, candidates have been able to get hired at companies like Google, Meta, Stripe, and others. Bean Jobs, who is sponsoring today's video with more than 2 million resumes created since their inception in 2020. All right, so this is the Bean Jobs website. Their UI is pretty simple. And right on their front page, they have resume templates that are designed by experts and they're specifically categorized based on what you're looking for. So they have more modern resumes, they have more professional resumes, some that are a bit more creative, and they also tell you what they're best for. So this is probably the one that I'm going to go for since my resume, as you guys have already seen, is very much the this professional resume right here. There's really not any color, it's all text, and it really doesn't have that much personality. But under each resume template, they'll also tell you what each resume is best for. So for example, this one is best for resumes with a lot of content or aka a lot of text, which is kind of mine, but I don't really want one that has like a side panel like this. This one is great for standing out. This one is very professional. Um, this is probably what looks most similar to my current resume, but I kind of want to steer away from that. Um, this one is best for three plus years of experience. I'm gonna use this as a template and it basically will tell you how you want to fill your resume with information. So you can go with the original graphic designer example. You can also upload your existing resume or import your LinkedIn profile, but I'm going to go with a industry example just to see what other people are doing. So I'll just search up cybersecurity and here I'll basically find the resumes that fit that criteria that I'm looking for. So specifically for my job title, I am a cybersecurity analyst. So I would choose this one and then it'll essentially configure the resume for you based on the role that you chose. So if you're working as a cybersecurity engineer, your resume may look different from mine as a cybersecurity analyst. Using AI, they'll walk you step by step through creating a resume that helps you get more interviews because they're also aligned with what HR and hiring managers are actually looking for. All right, so this is the resume that we've generated. Having this preview is really nice because then you can also see what you're typing in as well as how it actually looks. So firstly, I'm gonna edit to make it have my actual information and then cybersecurity analyst. Essentially, you're gonna be filling in your information to overwrite what's already on this resume and edit it towards your own experience and your skill set. Personally, I don't add my social links on my resume, but I know a lot of people who do. So I would say LinkedIn and GitHub are probably the main two that you can add. Twitter, only if you use it for professional usage, like if you're writing about your walkthroughs or cybersecurity guides or trainings and courses that you've taken. Otherwise, I would probably leave that out and primarily stick with LinkedIn um, or GitHub. Or of course, if you have your own website or portfolio site where you can share your projects, then that would be another link I would add on there. But for now, I'm not going to add my social medias. And we're basically going down the line to edit my information. So went to Temple University in Philadelphia. If anyone else watching also went to Temple, I'm really glad you're here. But one thing that's cool is the fact that you can also hide a field on your resume. So if you don't want to show your school's location or if you don't want it on there, you can just remove it. So that makes editing and updating this resume template a whole lot easier because it's kind of like a plug and play method of adding in your information, hiding what you don't want to show. I wonder how my typing is catching on to this mic. You can also choose to add awards onto your resume. This was something that I had on my original resume. I would say all throughout college. And this is another reason why I think your resume as a student is gonna look so different. Even if you're you know, still in cybersecurity, it'll look really different compared to someone who's been working for even one year. Because right when I graduated college, I stopped using my resume that had all of those scholarships, awards, anything that really had to do with school, like student leadership organizations, it wasn't really as relevant anymore. So I ended up removing those. But if you do have more relevant awards, then I would definitely add those. But for now, I do not. You can also add your GPA. Mine was 83.74. Another thing about courses, I'm sure a lot of people have different thoughts on this, but if you're not a student, then I wouldn't add courses from your college days onto your resume. If this is a different course that you've taken online outside of your bachelor's or your associate's or even your master's degree, then yes, I would add those courses. But if the course is part of your degree, I don't think it's necessarily that relevant to add it. And instead, I would take the key skills that you learned in those classes 
classes, the most relevant ones, and then list those on your resume as separate skills because it's a lot harder to optimize your resume for courses because if a hiring manager or an HR person looks at your resume and sees that you took computational statistics, that doesn't really tell them that much about what you learned in that class or if you're going to be relevant for a you know cybersecurity analyst role, even for a software engineering role. Unless there may be some project that you worked on or a specific skill using a specific statistics tool, then I would add that on your resume instead of course name because every school will have different names for their courses and, and it just won't be as relevant to a hiring manager. But of course, if you're a student, you're still in school and you know, you're know you a junior in a cybersecurity degree program, then if the course is relevant, then go ahead and add it onto your resume. Unless you already have enough relevant work experience, technical experience from personal projects, from internships, externships, but this is my personal opinion. So feel free to prove me wrong in the comments below. And of course, if you have another degree, you can also add it here. I'm going to start adding my experience, starting with my last job as an information security analyst. I was working fully remote. So after creating the role, you're able to update the responsibilities and the things that you did on your resume. I would highly recommend keeping a lot of the action words that they used on here, especially the way that they word things. For example, reducing overall risk exposure by 26%. A lot of the bullet points that they've made on this resume are essentially catered towards showing the impact of what you did and not just your day-to-day -day tasks. Because oftentimes I'll fall into the trap of creating a resume and then just writing down what I did on a day-to-day -day basis. For example, reviewing my vulnerability scans or working with stakeholders or working on security tickets. And it doesn't really say that much about how important that is to the team or to the company. So I would definitely stick with their wording, update it to include whatever experience that you did in an internship or a work study or whatever experience. Or of course, if you want to add project experience on here instead of work experience, if you're still a student or in your early career, then of course that works too. But for now, just for confidentiality's sake, I'm going to keep this SOC analyst role since my last role was a defensive security analyst role. So it was very similar, even though we didn't have an official SOC. And they also give you other sample work responsibilities, which is really, really cool. You can also use different keywords based on different roles. And of course, it'll be different for a cybersecurity analyst, a pen tester, a digital forensic specialist. For example, this would be perfect for someone who is going to pen testing or doing any kind of red teaming. This is probably most relevant to what I did. So I'm going to add that one. And I'm actually going to remove Acunetics since I've never used that tool. Unless you're at a job for you know many, many years, um, I would say three to four, three to four bullet points so that it doesn't get too lengthy. All right, so now on to my next role. When I was in my cybersecurity rotation program, I was multiple different roles, and one of them was also as a software engineer. So I'm going to actually look for that on top of my cybersecurity role. As you can see, these bullet points all sound really good. They just make all your works really, really impactful, especially when it comes to, for example, reducing number of bugs by 11% month over month. Essentially adding numbers to a lot of your bullet points is going to be very important in showing your impact. The sample work are just examples that you can pull from so that you follow a specific type of wording to get your resume noticed by more recruiters and more hiring managers. And for those of you who don't know, I'm primarily from a software engineering background. So that is why a lot of my resume is carried towards software engineering and not as much cybersecurity, especially in kind of the early phases of my career. So that is something to keep in mind. We basically already updated a good majority of the resume, my name, contact info, any links, and all of my work experience, which of course is gonna be the most relevant. Your resume may be focused on personal projects or, or maybe focused on certifications and courses that you've taken. So our resumes definitely don't have to look exactly the same. And it really depends on where you're sitting in your career and the years of experience that you have. All right, so now we have the skills section. So I'm going to remove some of the skills I do not have and add in some of the tools that I'm more comfortable using. Again, this is gonna look really different for everyone, but if you're a cybersecurity analyst, you may not have coding on your resume. I do recommend it as someone who is you know, just starting out. If you have some scripting, if you have some coding skills, it is always better than not having them because you never know when they're gonna come in handy. All right, this is a fun part, objective. I know some people have objectives on their resume, kind of like an intro to yourself kind of like you're talking to a person, but they do mention that they only recommend it if you're changing careers. So I'm actually just not gonna have an objective on my resume. It just wouldn't make sense for me at this time. And then finally, certifications. I have security plus. And here you can also change a lot of the customizations. So the font type, the spacing, the actual template that you're using. But let's see what my resume looks like. All right, so this is my full resume. I'm probably going to change this a little bit just so that it sticks to one page, just as a personal preference. I might change the font of my name to make 
make it smaller so that it can fit better. I'm going to change the vertical spacing a bit and then also make the font a little bit smaller. Actually, let's keep the font. All right, so this is my new and improved resume. And because Bean Jobs optimizes your resume so that you can actually get more interviews from recruiters, this also just in general makes your job search a whole lot easier because your resume is optimized for impact and not just your day-to-day -day tasks for what you did in a job. Their goal is to help anyone at any stage of your career land their dream job and feel less alone in their job search. Plus, they have the best user reviews, user experience, and customer support. So if one of your goals this year is to start a career in cybersecurity, then I would really recommend it trying out Bean Jobs to create your resume for you so that it's optimized towards specific roles that you're actually interested in. And you can check out the top five security resume examples on Beam Jobs using the link in my description below. Thanks again to Beam Jobs for sponsoring today's video. I really hope that it's a helpful resource for you guys when you're building out your cybersecurity resume, especially as you start getting more certifications, getting more skills and experience, you're really going to want a good resume to wrap things up so that when you actually start applying, you're going to get better response rates and interview rates compared to a resume that you may be drafting on your own. Thanks again so much for watching. Let me know if you guys have any other video topics that you may want to see from me in the future. I'd be happy to add them into my backlog. And I already know that 2024 is going to be your year for starting your career in security. And I'm really excited that you're here. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if this video was helpful to you, please consider liking and subscribing as it really helps out the channel. I post videos weekly and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.